Let's look at the nucleophilic opening of an epoxide. And what I've done here is I've drawn an epoxide with a methyl group over here, methyl group over here, and an ethyl group in the back. And I've drawn the epoxide in two different ways. One using this sort of wedges and dashes to represent the three-dimensional shape. And I also have a three-dimensional model here that I can turn and look at from a bunch of different angles. And I've also color-coded my groups so that the uh, methyls are green, the ethyl is blue, and my oxygen or my epoxide is red. And in nucleophilic opening in an epoxide, we have, the nucleophile has a choice of two carbons to attack, the one that I've shown here on my left or on my right. And the nucleophilic opening of the epoxide is always going to go to the less substituted carbon, less sterically hindered for the nucleophile to attack, and that's going to be this carbon right here. So the nucleophile attacks this carbon, the oxygen gets the electrons that were in the bond. And I can show that in my three-dimensional model too, and something to keep in mind is that this is going to be an SN2-like attack in a lot of ways and that the nucleophile is going to come from the less hindered side, uh, which is this side and the side that's opposite of my leaving group, which in this case is the oxygen of the epoxide. If this purple sphere is our nucleophile, it's coming in from this side where the oxygen leaves from the top. You can see I've put it or tried to put it in sort of the least sterically hindered approach on this carbon. And it's slightly off center from my leaving group, but that's the approximate direction of approach. In the three-dimensional model, the arrows showing the electron movement look like this, where if I rotate it, you can see my nucleophile comes in from the side opposite of my oxygen, and my oxygen leaves. And what I want you to notice is when this happens, my nucleophile is below this carbon in the plane of this bond, and the oxygen is above the plane of this bond, which means that in the product, my nucleophile will be going in one direction, down the way I've shown it here, and my oxygen will be pointing up in the way I've drawn it here, opposite sides of this bond. And we can look at that over here, and I get something like this with my oxygen going up, my nucleophile going down. We can also visualize that over here on my three-dimensional structure. As my nucleophile comes in towards this carbon that it's attacking, the oxygen starts to leave. As this bond starts to form, this one, this one starts to break. As this starts to come up, these are going to go down a little bit more than they were. And as this comes in, this is going to move up. And there is a hydrogen here that got deleted accidentally that also moves up. To give me something that looks like that. You can see my oxygen and my incoming nucleophile are pointing in opposite directions. If we clean up the structure a little bit, we get something that looks like this. You can see oxygen one direction, nucleophile the other direction, just as I've tried to show on the other side.